This video will be about solving radical and rational equations. When we solve radical equations, first we have to isolate the radical on one side of the equation. Then we have to raise both sides of the equation to the same power, because whatever we do to one side we have to do to the other. Then we have to solve for the variable, and then we have to check for extraneous solutions. Remember extraneous solutions are the solutions that do not work when we plug them back in. So for example, we have the square root of x minus 2 equals 3. So first we've got to get the variable by itself. So we'll start from the outside in, and we'll add 2 to both sides. So we have the square root of x equals 5. All right, then we have to get rid of our radical, so we raise it to whatever power our index is, this number in here. So this is a square root, so we're going to raise it to the second power. So we get x equals 25. Remember, you always have to plug it back in and check for extraneous solutions. So we'll come back to our original equation and we'll plug in 25 for x. So square root of 25 minus 2 equals 3. The square root of 25 is 5. 5 minus 2 is 3. So 3 equals 3. So that solution works. Number 2. The square root of 4x minus 3 equals x. So we've already got this radical by itself, so we're just going to square it. All right, so then we end up 4x minus 3 equals x squared. Now we have a quadratic because of this x squared, so we have to get everything to one side and set it equal to 0. So we can say 0 equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. This one is factorable. We have two numbers that multiply to a positive 3 but add to a negative 4, and that's negative 3 and negative 1. We have x minus 3, x minus 1. When we solve, we end up with x equals positive 3 and x equals positive 1. Again, we have to plug them back in and check for extraneous solutions. So if we plug 3 in, we end up with the square root of 4 times 3 minus 3, and that should equal... 3. So then we have the square root of 12 minus 3, which is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. 3 equals 3. That one works. We do the same thing with 1. So we have the square root of 4 times 1 minus 3. And it should equal 1. 4 times 1 is 4. Minus 3 is 1. And the square root of 1 is 1, 1 equals 1, so we're good. What if it's not a square root? So in this case, we have a cube root and a fourth root. Well, we have the same steps. So first, we'll have to get this radical by itself. So we're going to divide both sides by 4 to move that 4 over. So we end up with the oops, cube root of x minus 3 equals negative 3. So to get rid of this cube root, we're going to raise it to the power of the index, which our index is 3. So we'll cube both sides. So we end up with x minus 3 equals negative 27. Remember, a negative cubed is a negative. Then we add 3 to both sides, and we end up with x equals negative 24. Remember, we have to plug it back in and check for extraneous solutions. So we have 4 times the cube root of negative 24 minus 3, and it should equal negative 12. So then we have 4 times the cube root, negative 24 minus 3 is negative 27. This should be a negative 12. All right, the cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. And it works. For number 4, we have the fourth root of 4x squared equals x. All right, so we've got already got our radical isolated, so we're just going to raise each side to the fourth. All right, we're raising it to whatever root we have. So then we get 4x squared equals x to the fourth. If we move our x to the fourth over, 
we have a GCF we can pull out, which is x squared. So we end up with x squared times 4 minus x equals 0. 4 minus x squared, we can use difference of squares. So we have x squared times 2 minus x times 2 plus x. And then we solve a set each of these equal to 0. So we get x equals 0, x equals 2, and x equals negative 2. Now we have to plug all three of these back in to see if, if we have an extraneous solution. So I'm just going to come block those off so we don't get them confused. So we have the fourth root of 4 times 0 squared, and it should equal 0. Well, 0 squared is 0. 0 times 4 is 0. So we end up with the fourth root of 0 equals 0. And any root of 0 is going to be 0. So that one works. All right, then we can plug in the fourth root of 4 times positive 2 squared, and it should equal a positive 2. All right, we have the fourth root of 4 times 2 squared, which is 4 times 4, which is 16. The fourth root of 16 is 2, and 2 equals 2, so that one works. We have to try our third one of negative 2. So we have the fourth root of 4 times negative 2 squared, and it should equal a negative 2. Well, negative 2 squared is positive 4. 4 times 4 is 16. The fourth root of 16, as we said over here, is a 2. But positive 2 does not equal negative 2, so it's extraneous. So our only solutions are x equals 0 and x equals 2. Looking at rational equations. Rational equations are where we have fractions when we have variables in the denominators. All right, so anytime we're going to add a fraction, we're going to find a common denominator. And the same goes here. We have to find a common denominator between x plus 3, 6, and 18. All right, well, 6 goes into 18, so the common denominator between these two is 18. And the common denominator between 18 and x plus 3, we just multiply them together. So our overall common denominator is 18 times x plus 3. So now we just have to get every denominator to become 18 times x plus 3. So to get this first one, x plus 3 to this, we just multiply by 18. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So we have 4 times 18. To get 6 to this, we multiply by 3 times x plus 3. And this is still an 18 x plus 3. So it will be 5, multiply that by 3 times x plus 3. And then this, we already have 18, so we just have to multiply it by x plus 3. So we multiply 23 by x plus 3. Once we have our denominators the same, we can get rid of them and just look at our numerators. So we have 4 times 18, which is 72. And then we're going to add 5 times 3 is 15. And then we're going to distribute that 15 to x plus 3, so we get 15x plus 45, and then we're going to distribute our 23, so we get 23x plus 69. So on this side, we have 15x plus 117 equals 23x plus 69. So then we can just slowly start solving for x, so we can subtract 15x and we can subtract 69. Alright, so we end up with 48 equals 8x. We divide by 8, we get x equals 6. Once again, we have to plug back in and make sure it works. So we have 4 over 6 plus 3 plus 5, 6 should equal 23 over 18. 
So then we have 4 ninths plus 5 sixths, which would be 23 over 18. Our common denominator between 9 and 6 is 18. So we end up with 8 over 18 plus 15 over 18. And that does equal 23 over 18. So x equals 6 is our solution. And our last one, it's a little bit more complicated, but it's the same steps. We're going to first find our common denominator. Now, whenever you have a quadratic, and then you have binomials on each side, we can factor this quadratic. And chances are, it's going to uh, factor out to have the same factors. Okay, so two numbers that multiply to 15 but add to 8 are 5 and 3. So we can rewrite that as x plus 5 times x plus 3. And now our common denominator is simply x plus 5 times x plus 3 because both of our other terms go into that. So our first term to get x plus 5 to this we just multiply by x plus 3. So we'll have to take 2x multiply by x plus 3. And we have our minus down here, we're not changing anything because it is our common denominator. So we can just rewrite our middle term. And then it's got to equal, and we have x plus 3 on the bottom, so we have to multiply by x plus 5. So we do 3 times x plus 5. Now our denominator is the same, so we can just look at our numerators. If we distribute this 2x, we end up with 2x squared plus 6x. Then we're going to subtract. Now this x squared minus x minus 10 has to go in parentheses because we're subtracting the whole term. Minus x minus 10 equals, and then we distribute our 3, so 3x plus 15. All right, we can distribute this negative, so we get 2x squared plus 6x minus x squared plus x plus 10 equals 3x plus 15. 15. Then we can simplify this side to x squared plus 7x plus 10. And we have a quadratic, so we're going to have to move everything over. So we have x squared plus 4x minus 5 equals 0. This is factorable, and we can factor it out to be x right up here, x minus 1 times x plus 5. So x equals positive 1 and x equals negative 5. Just like with our other problems, we have to plug these solutions back in to see if we have any extraneous solutions. Just by looking at this negative 5, I know that if I plug it back in, up here we would have negative 5 plus 5, we would end up with 2x divided by 0. We can't divide by zero. No bueno. Okay? It's an undefined, so for that, ugh. so therefore, our x equals negative 5 solution is extraneous. So now all we have to do is plug in for x equals 1. So we'll clear off a little area. We have 2 times 1 over 1 plus 5 minus 1 squared minus 1 minus 10 over 1 squared plus 8 times 1 plus 15. And this should equal 3 over 1 plus 3. 2 times 1 is 2. 1 over 5 is 6. So we have 2, 6 minus 1 squared is 1, minus 1 is 0, minus 10 is negative 10. 1 squared is 1. 8 times 1 is 8. So 1 plus 8 plus 15 is 24. And 1 plus 3 is 4. We have to find a common denominator, which would be 24. Our negative negative becomes a positive. So 2 over 6 becomes 8 over 24 plus 10 over 24. And it should equal 18 over 24. 18 over 24 does indeed equal 18 over 24. So x equals 1 works, and x equals negative 5 is an extraneous solution.